It's no secret that teaching is a difficult job. It can mean long hours, it can mean moments of tedium and boredom. There are times when you feel yourself repeating the same directions over and over again, and it's just hard. It doesn't mean you don't like being a teacher, it doesn't mean that you're bad at it, it's just that the job itself is hard. But I think there's value in sort of reframing it. And what I mean is finding pieces of the job that most people can't stand and then looking for opportunities of joy and opportunities for fun. And the person who really got me to rethink this was actually a guy named William Chamberlain. I doubt he's even watching this video, but I hope he is. He was the one who convinced me to enjoy being out on duty. I used to hate showing up for bus duty early in the morning. It was hot, which is kind of different because it was Phoenix. It was blazingly hot before school, blazingly hot after school. And I didn't like standing out by the buses. It just felt like a waste of time. And I mentioned that at the time, God, this was years ago. I think I mentioned it on Twitter. And William kind of pushed back. And he said, John, you are the first face they see in the morning and the last face they see in the afternoon. That's an incredible responsibility. He wasn't trying to be overly positive and schmaltzy and stuff like that, because that is not how William works. He was being 100% serious, that there is value in being out on duty. And so I started to rethink what it meant to be out on duty. Like, what if it's a chance to be relational? It's a chance to see students in a different element. So I changed my entire approach and entire mindset to having duty. And what it meant was a lot of times I'd be asked to do someone else's duty because they were, God, I feel weird keep saying the word duty and not laughing about it because it's the word duty. But I would often volunteer for it at the end because I started seeing value in hanging out with my students and just seeing them as more than just students but as actual people. And there were a lot of things like this that I, I began my career not liking and then eventually fell in love with those parts of the job. Here's another example, grading. Grading is a pain if it's focused on data entry and just inputting grades into a computer. But if it's a chance to leave qualitative feedback, if it's a chance to engage in a conversation with students, then it's actually incredibly fun and meaningful and powerful. Or I think of something like lesson planning. If it's focused on simply getting things done and hitting the chart and making sure all the boxes are filled out, then yes, it is a pain. If it's something I'm stuck doing on a Sunday night and I'm not looking forward to it, yes, absolutely, it's awful. But if I start planning projects and even lesson planning to a certain extent over the summer where I have the space and the freedom to do that, then it becomes like an empty canvas and I can actually plan and dream and figure things out. Or sometimes it'll be early in the morning or a point on my prep period. And in those moments too, lesson planning becomes, for lack of a better term, fun. It is an insanely creative aspect of the job. It is one of the few areas where you have almost complete autonomy as a teacher. Or I think of parent-teacher conferences, which the first couple times I was like, man, I gotta stay late, this is so hard. My Spanish isn't great, most of the parents speak Spanish. And then I realized, no, this is actually a chance to model humility and admit that my Spanish isn't great. But then to practice it with my students and their families. It's a chance to brag about my students and tell the, their parents how awesome they're doing. And that by treating parent-teacher conferences as 100% positive, and promising myself that any discipline issues, any problems will be addressed before parent-teacher conferences ever happen. Then parent-teacher conferences became moments of celebration, especially as we shifted toward student-centered models. The point is, there are all of these things inside of education that are hard or boring or whatever. Things that you might not necessarily choose to do ahead of time if you had your way you don't have your way. And because you don't have your way, you can look at it and do it with a negative attitude. And you can grit your teeth and you can be angry about it. 
or you can decide that there's a hidden opportunity. That every single little thing like that, that at first glance seems difficult, is actually a chance to do something meaningful.